If you've ever wanted to become an environment artist, well, now's your chance. Introducing the brand new Environment Artist Survival Kit, a brand new course designed to take you from a complete beginner to an absolute master in Unreal Engine. You're gonna be creating everything you see on the screen here. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Now, early bird pricing is just starting. The course has just dropped. So if you wanna get the course at a reduced price, hop on right now and grab it before it's too late. Let's get into the video. Hi, I'm Sonia Martin, a French 3D character artist and designer and recent graduate from Brassard. Today I'm going to present to you one of my recent projects, the 3D recreation of a Batman panel by George Jimenez, and I'll break down the process to you which highly depends on hand painting. This project was pretty much made for me to have fun painting, with the challenge to be as close as possible to the reference, so pretty much all my choices revolved around that. So at this point, it was already decided that the goal would be to make a quick turn of Batman with an unlit base color workflow. So right here you can see my main reference, which is the, the Batman panel in question, as well as a few more references I found on our station that are about anatomy, just to help me with the, the parts I struggle with. So I always had this little panel somewhere on my screen with pure ref. So the first step for me was modeling and sculpting. And as you can see, I used the base mesh in 3ds Max to get somehow close to the pose very fast. So here you can see the model in ZBrush. I did a quick symmetry to the arm and all. And that's what I started with for the sculpt. My biggest challenge here was to make sure the pose makes sense from different angles. It's the trickiest part, in my opinion, when it comes to translating 2D artworks to 3D. So here you can see one of the first uh, versions of my uh, ZBrush file. So here you can see that I moved on and merged the, the body together. I think just the hands are separated here, and the head as well. Yeah, hands are separated. And here you have probably one of the most recent versions. So after a quick retopo and unwrap of the character, I finally got to texturing. As I said before, I want an unlit base color render, so I only worked with the base color view. But sometimes I still switched to the material view just to make sure that what I paint follows the model's shape. I always like to start the process of hand painting with this base color generator, which creates a grayscale map combining wall space, AO, and curvature from my bake. Then I just have to add a gradient map filter to give it the desired colors. Just here, like filter, gradient, here. So at first, for example, for the head, without any painting, it just looked like this. Here you can see I can adjust all the colors to get what I want. So once I had all the base color gradients set up, I moved on to hand painting. I split the process of hand painting in three parts, colors, lines and effects, as you can see here, with paint, like, uh, with paint and lines, for example. Here I just focused on capturing these colors, the colors of the skin. Here I got the eyes that are just pure white. And here I paint in the lines. The brushes I like to use the most are um, for painting, mostly Kyle's paint brushes here, like these ones or these ones that are more messy or these ones. And for the lines, I used this one a lot, which was very sharp, what I, exactly what I needed for lines. 
and then it's pretty much a, a work of uh, observation like picking the right colors understanding the flow of the lines and such and then I did the same for the mask for example So the body was a little bit trickier since it had more texture details. Like here you can see more some sort of brushwork, more line work as well. Also the all the hair over here and a lot of blood traces like here, here and here. Also the light over here was a bit tricky and all the hair again so here is again my base with the gradient and then my first layer of skin painting so in this layer I really just focus on covering all the colors the shadows here here you can see a little light zone here you, you have shadows here many shadows as well so that's what I try to cover on this layer and a little bit of light again and then I have the blood but only the blood that is under the line work for example here I have blood but that is over the black part so that comes later so here you can see the blood and here as well. Then spray was for all the brushwork on the abs for example. Here. For this I used some I used some specific brushes that kinda replicated the effects I wanted. And then finally we come back to the lines. So this workflow is very funny and it only works with one lighting, one view. So here you can see a lot of faking. I had a layer just for the hair. Negative was for stuff like uh, these lines over there or here you can see. So here, and finally, as I was saying, the blood drops here, 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 and then some quick painting for the clothes, like this, like the glove as well. Like it's a lot of, in the end, it's a lot of observation. Here I can see a little bit of red and also, of course, I try to mimic that. So at this stage I noticed again that some, some shapes were not uh, matching the reference. For example, his uh, waist is way too thin compared to the reference. Or, uh, for example, his head is uh, also not uh, square enough compared to the reference. And his hand is too big and too close to the face. So I came back into ZBrush to fix that and then moved on to rendering. Well, rendering was the easiest part, I guess. I did my renders in Marmoset, only rendering the albedo channel. Then I quickly created the planes for the background and painted them. I also separated the two panels to give it more depth. And as a final touch, I added a thin outline around Batman, and here it is. Using this workflow allows to put a huge emphasis on the painting work, as it also contains all the lighting informations. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little breakdown of my Batman project. It allowed me to develop my observation skills as I needed to be very close to the reference, which is a key skill for a 3D artist in my opinion. I had to come back and fix tiny differences with the references so many times. Thank you for listening.